Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna show you guys what is essentially the final working state of my basement brewery. I wanna show you guys in more detail how the whole thing works and what my design decisions were and then give you some ideas for the future. The state that it's currently in is the state that it's gonna be in for a while. Um, this is the basically the bare minimum that I need in order to be able to brew with successfully, but there's still plenty of things I'll be doing in the future in order to make this uh, an even more convenient place to brew in. I want to break it down into a few different chunks. So first of all, we'll talk about the electrical, then we'll talk about ventilation, and then we'll talk about organization, and then just future plans or anything else that happens to come up at that point. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here is basically just a overall shot of what the brewery looks like in the basement now. And compare that to the first shot that I gave you in the first video of this series, and you'll see uh, quite a few changes. But we'll tackle these kind of one by one as this goes. So here is the first part of the electrical. As you can see, there's a 240 volt receptacle on the right side there. I will eventually be upgrading to a 240 volt system. I just haven't really figured out what kind of upgrade path I want to take just yet. Uh, so I'm going to wait on that. But as of now, the entire brewery is set up for 120 volts and uh, a 20 amp circuit too. So there's plenty of juice to run both the claw hammer system and all of the peripherals like the hoods and the lights and the stuff like that. And also when I upgrade to 240 volts, uh, all I really need to do to be safe is to purchase a GFCI breaker to put into the breaker box. And that'll protect everything on that circuit from ground faults and shocks from wet short circuits and stuff like that. However, in the 120 volt side of things, this is a separate circuit. Uh, this is a GFCI receptacle. So instead of putting a breaker in the box, I actually added a GFCI receptacle here because this is actually a laundry area and that actually brought things up to code. It wasn't actually in spec with code prior to this. Uh, so that's kind of a nice upgrade there. But this is now a GFCI receptacle and it's wired such that there are two other outlets downstream from this one. Both of those are wired such that they uh, receive power via the load terminals on this GFCI receptacle. And that means that this outlet and any outlets beyond it are protected from ground faults as well just by this one GFCI. So I can induce a ground fault on either one of the downstream regular outlets and it will trip the GFCI here and protect me from any sort of electrical shocks. And a GFCI of some kind, whether it's a breaker or a receptacle or a plug, is pretty much mandatory with electric brewing, especially when you're working uh, in proximity of multiple different electric devices. So the claw hammer system comes with a GFCI plug in it, which actually means that it's protected from any sort of ground faults itself. But that doesn't mean that you're protected uh, from a short circuit if you have other things that are plugged into the circuits. So it's just good to have that insurance of having the GFCI receptacle in the actual circuit itself. Also, somebody made a comment a couple videos ago about how these boxes are a little tough to work in to cram all the wires and stuff in there. And yes, that's 100% correct. Um, I'll be replacing these with four inch by four inch boxes uh, sometime in the future because that just gives the wires a bit more room to breathe and it gives me a little bit more uh, peace of mind really so uh that'll be an eventual upgrade but for now they are working just fine and yes these metal boxes are all grounded so then from this circuit i ran romex across the ceiling in parallel with the other stuff over here and down to our first outlet which is this one then from that outlet it goes across the ceiling again and back down to a second receptacle here. Now, I am probably going to either add one more receptacle over here, or I'm just gonna turn this into a uh, four outlet, two gang receptacle instead. As it is right now, these receptacles are powering my uh, fermentation setups. And if I'm gonna be brewing, I actually have to unplug one of these at least to run the fan and probably another one to run a light. So next we'll talk about the hood and the ventilation. Uh, this hood has actually been really awesome. I've successfully brewed not one, but two beers here already. Um, I actually, I did a back-to-back -back brew day. One was a uh, Voskvike Azaka Pale Ale, and then the other one was actually a Belgian Dark Strong Ale, which obviously you're not gonna see on the channel for some time until it's fully aged out and ready. But the condensation and steam and odors and everything from these beers, uh, the hood can handle it all with ease. Unless you're standing within like three feet of the kettle, you can't actually tell that there's a brew going on by smell alone. 
it's that impressive. And also I've been tracking the humidity using these meters here. And during both brew sessions, one of which included a 90 minute boil, uh, I never saw the humidity rise more than 2% in the entire brew day. And it went right back down to the base level actually after the brew day was finished. But this hood is actually pretty great. Again, it's a thousand cubic feet per minute, which pulls a whole lot of air uh, at once. And it's more than enough to actually uh, suck up all the steam. There is a little bit of condensate that forms on it um, over the course of a long boil. So I'm not exactly a huge fan of that, but it's honestly not as much as I thought it would be. And again, this is a 120 volt boil coming from the claw hammer, not a 240 volt boil. So once I get to a 240 volt system, it's going to be a little bit of a different story, but we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, this hood also comes with some nice integrated lights, uh, which has been really great uh, for just uh, adding a little extra lighting to everything. I uh, also put my uh, delirium tremens sign I brought back from Belgium back there. That kind of helps remind me of uh, how awesome of a trip that was and how awesome that beer was. Um, the, the hood is not super quiet, but it's quiet enough. It has four speeds. So here's uh, just a quick demonstration of how loud it is per speed. That's the max speed, that's a thousand cubic feet per minute. And um, I checked with my upstairs neighbors and they can neither smell the beer as it's being made, nor can they actually hear the hood. It's mounted, I think, under the bathroom, so it's actually uh, kind of hard for them to, to hear it, which is good news, of course. This thing is pretty heavy too. Uh, it weighs about 50, 60 pounds, I think. And originally I wanted to try and mount it to the back wall, but the way the center of gravity on this thing is, it's, it's kind of almost like out here. So mounting it on the back is not really a good idea. It's just gonna pull forward. So instead I decided to build a frame out of two by fours to kind of hang it closer to its center of gravity just from the top. And that's mounted directly up into the joists. And um, if I ever need to remove the hood for any reason, I can just pop those uh, brackets off and the whole thing will come down. This is also about as high as I could get it while still leaving some room for the ducting to run out of the top. And it's about eight to 10 inches off the top of the kettle, which is more than enough space, honestly. Uh, and it actually it kind of optimizes how much uh, it captures steam. For that ducting it has a couple curves in it. I know it's not really the most airflow efficient design, uh, but it has a downward slope on it, mainly because I'm trying to avoid having condensation build up in there and then flowing back out of the duct through the hood and back into the beer. I kind of want to avoid that. So basically, if there's any sort of uh, condensation that builds up, it'll flow downhill more or less. And I guess it'll probably end up pooling over here. I'll probably have to find a way to maintain or otherwise uh, just replace this duct every so often because it could get a little bit uh, funky in there if I'm not careful. So now we're on the outside of that piece of wood where the uh, duct actually exits. And up here on the right side, you can see the, the regular dryer vent. I've got basically a larger version of that here to accommodate the eight inch diameter duct um, and has these louvers on it. And when that fan is running at full speed, these things honestly stick straight out. And uh, all, of that, all of that air is pushing out really, really fast. So that's quite nice. You also notice there's one more hole up here in uh, the corner, and that is actually to run a garden hose through in order to uh, power my chilling system. As you can see on the other side of the gate here, there's a garden hose spigot. So I hook a hose up to that spigot, run it through the aforementioned hole there down to the chiller. Then for the other side of the chiller, I'll run the hose back out through the open window and all the way out to the storm drain at the end of the driveway. One other significant upgrade that I made was the uh, installation of a pulley system for getting the grain basket out. That's pretty important, especially considering that this kettle is sitting much higher up than it was previously when I was brewing back in my place. It really helps a lot, especially with heavier grain bills. Uh, yesterday I was able to pull a whole 20 pound grain bill out of my co hammer system with this thing, so that was pretty great. Um, it works out pretty well. Um, I'm also a pretty big fan of the stainless steel table. Once again, it's just super easy to clean, very sturdy, um, and just a great addition to the brew house. Now, considering I can get it wet and sticky and stuff with a wort and just clean it right off with a damp cloth instead of having to use like a, a tile cleaner or something like that. So that's been a huge bonus. Over here, we have my cat. They're just not supposed to be part of the brew house. What are you doing? 
Um, but really, it's this is uh, my kind of organization side of things. As you can see, I got rid of the kayak that's now in the other room, but I just took my collapsible shelving and set it back up and organized it pretty much the same exact way it was at my place beforehand, just for familiarity's sake. Um, got a couple extra things now, like obviously there's the garden hose and I got some packages of ingredients and things lying around, a couple spare kegs in the back, but that's really it. It's not too bad. It doesn't take up nearly as much space as I thought, um, and that's definitely a good thing. So now over here, I've actually got the chest freezer down here, and I'm really surprised I was able to get it in here. Um, but now I'm actually going to use that as a fermentation chamber, which is awesome. So right now I've got the Voss Pale Ale in there, bubbling away. That should be done in about a day. And then over here, I got the CF5 hooked up uh, just with a heating pad right now because I'm doing a Belgian Dark Strong Ale in that. Um, but things are really moving along quite nicely. Like I said, just got a couple improvements to make and as I do make them, I'll update the, uh, the channel and I'll add it to that brewery build playlist. So if you're interested in making your own upgrades to your own spaces as well, and this is kind of giving you some motivation or some ideas, I have linked every single piece of equipment, at least the, the major pieces of equipment that I bought or things that I used to make this happen uh, down below in the description box. So check all that stuff out if you're interested. I'm gonna add a separate category to my Amazon store that covers this whole uh, basement brewery build stuff. And also this is now an official playlist uh, with the channel. So as I continue to make upgrades to this place, uh, I will add those videos to that playlist. So that way, if you're watching this in the future, you kind of can see how things evolve. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. So let me know down in the comment section what you think about everything. Thank you also for all of your very helpful, very insightful comments and ideas uh, on the previous videos in this series. Through those ideas, I was able to make some very good upgrades to the space. And um, I would not have really thought about that stuff if it wasn't for you guys. So big thank you to you. If you want to support the channel, please consider picking up one of these t-shirts like this one. I also have a whole bunch of other ones. They're all available down in the merch store down below the description box. I also have an Amazon store, which will also contain a subsection within it with all of the brewery build upgrades that I used uh, from Amazon. I also have a Patreon, which is linked down below the description box. And again, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters for helping make this happen as well. Last but certainly not least, if you are interested in following me on more than just YouTube, I'm also available on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer on Instagram, uh, where I'm going to put a little bit more content more frequently. So anyway, thank you for watching all the way to the uh, very end of the video. I really do appreciate it. And until the next one, cheers. Cheers.